Well, thank you for uh, joining us here in the finale episode. And yes. for those of you who are with us for the last hour in the live Q&A, thanks for being there uh, in that and for all the questions and all the yeah. kind comments and everything. I was just letting Donnie get his words out here, so we're good to go. He got everything out, and uh, we're ready to start. <laughs> we, uh, we just want to start off by saying thank you to you guys for watching and following us along. Uh, without you watching the videos, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So sincerely, thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing us to chase our passion and our dreams and come back and, and share it with you. That's right one of the reasons that we get or one of the things that we get out we just love showing you guys how we hunt and being able to share it now has just been become part of the joy of being able to go on our elk hunts so yeah no and that's we our goal from the beginning was to make you feel like you were there in camp with us and make you feel like you were on the mountain with us and uh a lot of those comments reaffirm that, that you did feel that, and that's that's our goal. We can't obviously hunt with everybody, but if we can bring you into our camp with us and share the highs, the lows, you know, there were some slow days this year. There was some intense, incredible action. And so if you're able to feel that and feel the, the slow days and hear Donnie breathing as he's walking <laughs> up the hill. And... It was all John. <laughs> John puts microphones on Donnie just so he can get the breathing <laughs> overlaid there. But no, thank you for, for being here. Thanks for your support of Elk 101 and Destination Elk especially. And also, sponsors. Be sure if you can and if you would, go tell the sponsors thank you. Just leaving a comment here probably isn't going to be seen, but if you could go to their Instagram page or go to their website and just hit the contact and send them an email and just say thanks so much for sponsoring Destination Elk. It's, you know, whatever compliments you want to give, please don't say anything negative. Uh, if you have anything negative to say, say it to us and we'll correct it. We'll relay it on to them. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure they know. <laughs> no, uh, Baku, this was their first year as a sponsor and you saw we were able to use their bikes a ton. And they, they provided opportunities I don't think we would have had otherwise. Just being able to get in a little farther in some of those areas, uh, being able to access roads that even ATVs weren't able to get on, they were so brushed in. Yeah. And then just the way we hunted changed a little bit. We were able to be way more mobile uh, and still listen and still be stealthy without driving a truck somewhere. So definitely uh, Baku was a huge part of our success this year. Uh, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, if you watched the last couple episodes, hopefully we don't need to say any more there. Huge and a huge part of what we do and who we are. And we, one last time, encourage you to support the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and become a member. Uh, Mountain Ops. Yeah. Mountain Ops and Bugleberry. And I know we had a huge promotion giving away an elk hunt. We're going to announce the winner here in a little bit. Yeah. but. The whole deal was to promote Bugleberry, and it sold out in two hours the first night. So uh, we're going to blame that one on Mountain Ops. Don't give us the heat for that one. Fortunately, they have some really incredible protein bars that also got chances in for that. But we have, I think we have 30-some tubs of Bugleberry that were given away. So we, did, uh, we set some aside for you guys, knowing that it would sell out. And then uh, lastly, Yeti. And Yeti has been with us from the beginning. Mountain Ops, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, been with us from the beginning and supported this project. So uh, Yeti is more than just coolers. And, you know, I think we all dreamed of having a Yeti cooler and, and they are everything they're advertised to be. They keep ice cold, they keep meat. Uh, so here's, here's a situation. My deep freeze was filled this year and I didn't have room for probably about half of an elk. So when Sam shot his elk at the end of the season, uh, we didn't have enough room for all the meat until we were able to get it to the, the people that were taking it. I put it outside in a Yeti cooler and it was there for eight days. I checked it every day to make sure, but eight days and the hamburger, everything stayed solid frozen. So it works. Uh, but now they're making obviously the trailhead camp chairs, which we're giving away some of those. 
the Go Box, the Loadout Go Box, which are awesome little organization boxes. Uh, they've got new luggage and yes. all sorts of awesome stuff. So bags. Yeah, the waterproof panga yeah. bags. And they're coming out with new colors all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, all sorts of new colors. It gets me in trouble at home because <laughs> oh, look at these new colors. Yeah. <laughs> so please go in and tell them thank you to allow us to be able to keep doing it and to keep trying to improve what we're doing. Uh, also Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls and Peaks, unofficial partners of Destination Elk, uh, but huge parts of, of what we do. Obviously with the elk calls, uh, our season wouldn't be nearly what it is yes. without the elk calls. So be sure and thank them and, and support them. But we didn't come here to uh, beg you to go and thank our sponsors or beg you to come back next year, but hopefully with uh, some of the recap we're gonna do tonight, uh, we're gonna talk about some of our favorite hunts, maybe some of the things you didn't see. Uh, we're gonna talk about questions that you had. There's over 100,000 comments that have been left so far just in the Destination Elk series. And believe it or not, we've read every one of them. And my wife is going to be incredibly happy to have me back and have my attention because the last 28 days I've been scrolling through comments and uh, I think yes. I've deleted six comments out of 100,000. Everybody is extremely positive every episode and it's always nice to you don't have a bunch of trolls in there gumming up, making it, ruining it for everybody else and causing little infights yeah. in just, comment sections. Yeah, one little negative comment just starts like a wildfire. So yeah. thank you for being positive and, and helping us keep a, a positive image in in the hunting community and in what we do. Yeah. So speaking of comments, that's how you got entered to win over $25,000 in prizes and gear that we're giving away tonight. Uh, by commenting, it's too late now. If you go back now and do it, we've already got the list. In fact, it's a big list. Yes. So I'm not going to bring it up to the camera because John always shakes his head and says it's out of focus. But big list, uh, over 120 winners. We're going to read them off here tonight so that if you hear your name, you know you're a winner. Uh, we're also going to put it in the description. So go down there and click, and we're going to have all the winners listed out there and if your name is is uh, read or included you have two weeks from tonight to send an email to info at elk101.com and provide us with your name and mailing address so we can get the prizes to you uh, we're not going to tell you what you won tonight because it'll take us forever to go through and name all the prizes but we do have them sorted out and when you email us we will let you know what you're going to be receiving and if you could give us three or four weeks maybe to get everything shipped out and to you. So with that, Donnie, what was your favorite part of Destination Elk V3? Oh, as brutal as it was, I'm gonna have to say the rifle hunt just- With the llamas? With the llamas and not getting, terrain that we typically would have avoided because of the distance that we had to go, the steepness of it, and we were a little fearful going into it all summer long. I was. and I was too. It turned out to be a lot better than I expected it to be. Just totally different scenery and one elk. <laughs> But it was worth it and gives us a little drive to push ourselves a little bit farther like that in the future. Yeah, and to take our physical conditioning hopefully yeah. to the next level. I've already started, uh, we've all already started looking forward to another adventure like yeah. that. Yeah. Glad to hear Donnie say that was his favorite. We might be able, yeah. when we left there last year, Donnie said, not going back. I was, I was done. We all were. When we got out. So That's are you saying now that you'll go back? I'd go back. We might have to get Donnie and John and Elk Tag and go back in there. <laughs> they, yeah. uh, they earned the opportunity to, yeah. to be first shooters next time. That was, um, 
I think that hunt displayed for us the epitome of what we do and how we do it. Just, you know, and I, I'm still learning from John and Donnie about the selflessness part of it. Uh, but going back and just watching, you know, sometimes these things happen and, and I recognize it, but don't realize the significance of it maybe, but Donnie sacrificed personal hunting days to hunt with my children. Uh, John sacrificed time with his family to change plans and, and come and hunt with us when we weren't planning on hunting. Uh, you saw John walking back and getting the llamas. You saw Donnie giving me the shot. Just that, that teamwork, it really is, you know, we, we don't take anything for granted and we are, we're a team when it comes to success. And I think we're successful because we're a team. Any other highlights from the season? Oh, the Outfitters for Hope is, it, it's always, kind of, that's why it's always at the end because it's a capstone. But it always just rejuvenates and gives you hope for the future of hunting just through the kids that we have been able to take out. They go back and, you know, Shane now is gung-ho, wants to learn every single thing that he can about hunting everything. And it's been the same with all of the other kids that we've taken out over the years. That You can't beat that hunt, so. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, you know, you saw it two episodes ago, the interview with Shane, and just, you know, that was six, seven years ago when that happened. And it's still, you know, the emotions that he has from that experience, but just the, the growth that he's, that he's had in life and in the perspective he has uh, to be able to share an elk camp. And there's just something special. I mean, we could, we could take Shane down to the bowling alley and have a bowl of French fries and, and go bowling or something and realize how cool of a kid he is. But there's something special about spending a week in elk camp with, with anybody. I think there's just bonds that are formed there. And to be able to do it with someone like Shane. Yep. Uh, and, and the past five years, it's every one of them have been yeah. just incredible memories. So, yeah, that's a highlight for sure. That and we hunted with people that we haven't hunted with before this season. With Lewis and yeah. with Casey and just being able to share that camp, you walk away from that with much deeper friendships than you've had before. And it gives that desire that you want to uh, continue, continue on and keep in contact with everybody. And yep. it's just rewarding. Yep. I think probably some of the, the things you didn't see were uh, Donnie gets cantankerous. I mean, he just. You, you, you see him just being all soft-spoken and quiet, but, man, when he snaps, it, it comes out. Yeah. Uh, he snapped at me. <laughs> yeah. You, you, I don't remember if, I didn't, I didn't catch it in the episode. Like, I don't know if John cut it out or if it was there. A few people commented, but I think it was just because I commented about it in the outro. Yeah. But we, uh, Donnie and I had spent, at that point, close to 40 days together literally almost non-stop and uh i have a tendency to get on people's <laughs> nerves i think i'm i'm yeah. a little i'm just you know i'm high strung and yeah. go hard and it was like 12 or 13 years of pent-up frustration <laughs> and it all came out with i'm getting it <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the most snap i've ever heard out of Donnie. Was I was just, yeah. I didn't think he was hearing me, so I just kept whispering it over and over. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Yeah. And he finally turned out and he said, I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. There was uh, one time when on Sam's hunt, we were hunting with Sam, and there were just bulls everywhere. And we'd be going down a ridge, and all of a sudden a bull would bugle over here, and I'd be going back, and Donnie and Sam would be going down to set up. And I went by one time, and Donnie reminded me, I said, I, I remember saying it. But just in the heat of the moment and everything, Donnie, whose job on that hunt was to be with Sam and to help Sam get set up, 
And we had a camera. I mean, both of us carried a camera and we're trying to video as much as we can to get another perspective. And Donnie went by talking on the camera and Sam's kind of just lost walking, doesn't know where to go. I'm like, put the camera down and help Sam. <laughs> so we both had our, our opportunities to vent our frustrations, but we won't talk about John because John just snaps all the time. Yeah. He's bossy, giving orders. The problem is he gets to edit everything, so he cuts out all of his comments that are yeah, really Yeah, funny mean. how that works. Yeah. No, John doesn't say anything other than positive stuff. And the, one of the things that you don't realize when you have the cameraman, the cameraman is up 30 minutes, 45 minutes before we're getting up, and then they are going to bed an hour, hour and a half after we go to bed because he's getting everything ready for the day in the morning, making sure he's got all his batteries charged. And then in the evening, it takes much longer because he has to download all of that footage to clear up the memory cards for that next day to be fresh and ready in the morning. And to back it up, because the last thing we want to do is have some yeah. epic content that gets lost or yeah. something. So. That just explains why he's asleep 90% of the day. He's up early, yes. up late, and then he just <laughs> sleeps throughout the day. So He does get a nap every once in a while. If we drive somewhere, he nods off pretty quickly. Yeah. But uh, we've, uh, we've got a lot of questions. There were a bunch of questions that came through. We get them through Instagram and in the comments down below, uh, a pile of questions. And some of them were good. A lot of them are answered in the outro. So I could tell a lot of people, as soon as the hunting action's over, you're, you're turning it off. And we spend, you know, eight, ten minutes after every episode talking about some of the things that came up in that episode. So be sure and watch those outros. A lot of the strategies for successes were in the outro. Uh, a lot of the dad jokes, uh, a lot of the description of some things we just, we either didn't capture and we had to explain uh, or, you know, you saw a few episodes ago in Sam's Hunt, Donnie forgot his backpack. Yeah. And then mysteriously that night, Donnie's wearing a backpack. And what we didn't capture was I went back on the bikes because we were so far through on the road that we were actually closer to uh, another road on the other side where we were going to hike out. So I took the bike back out, drove all the way around to the truck, and or took the bike to the truck, and then drove the truck around the other way and brought Donnie's pack back in for him. So he also, little things like that. He also had to get batteries for the bikes. That's true. Because we're in there so far, towing <laughs> heavy boys, <laughs> we drained the battery. And yeah, we went through batteries because we had, you saw the tow strap <laughs> hooked up to the regular mountain bike and Isaac, who was 195 pounds riding yeah. that, and it worked the worked the e-bike. But yep. even at that, it was awesome. We had the chariot for Sam, we had a tow strap for Isaac, so we had five of us that were able to transport with three yeah. e-bikes. So. Uh, so speaking of those questions, we're going to go through and, and answer a few of them because there were some some good ones that we hadn't talked about and that I think probably were other people would find interesting as well. So I do have a list of them here and I'll just read through them. Don't forget, we still have one giveaway that's going to continue beyond tonight. You can just go to elk101.com forward slash dev3 and just enter your name and email address and we're giving away a prime bow an exo backpack which is one right here behind me uh, we're giving away a loadout go box from yeti and a trailhead camp chair so four more winners uh, about a i don't know what's that two thousand dollar prize yeah. uh, package there that we're giving away to four winners so just go to that website and uh, everything else we're going to take care of tonight so uh, let's see. First one, Donnie, what's the story with the Mohawk? The story with the Mohawk, I got it a lot and I don't have a specific reason other than it started as a joke when COVID started. I had just turned 50 and my hair was about this long on the sides. It was about that long on the top. And I went in the bathroom and I shaved it and left a mohawk. Nobody was at work, so I couldn't get razzed about it. 
And oh, you got razzed. My it. wife liked it, and every time I tell her I'm going to shave it, she's like, "Just leave it, just leave it." And it's kind of grown on me. <laughs> it's a rat's nest when I'm wearing my hat all day, but on dress-up nights when I spike it up. What what, it is, what occasion is it that? It is tall. What occasion is a dress-up night where you spike up your mohawk? When we go to Walmart or... County fair. <laughs> rock concerts. <laughs> I think that Donnie's mohawk was, at least for the first six episodes, that was all anybody was talking about. Of course, there was no yeah. bugling action in those episodes yeah. until we got into them. But, yeah, that was a, that was a big question and a big comment early yes, on. Was, it was. Isn't he like 50? Why does he have a mohawk? Yeah, it was fun. I honestly asked him to bring a, a razor tonight and let me shave it, but he didn't. So. Not yet. Not yet. We'll get it. Uh, let's see. One of the questions we hunted, uh, I forget, episode three, three and four, two and three, somewhere in there. We hunted the, the border of some private land and had a couple encounters bringing the bull right to the fence. That was one of our strategy for successes, but... Uh, a lot of questions about were you nervous at all about shooting the bull when it jumped the fence and then having it go back on the private and definitely a concern uh, definitely something that we think about i think that fence especially uh, an elk that's shot i think is probably going to go away from it and not want to turn and, and jump over a big sturdy fence like that and obviously they'll do crazy things when they're shot but for the most part that fence was if the bull came over the fence He's facing away from it and he's facing downhill. So the most likelihood was he was going to continue down the hill and away from the fence. So, uh, yeah, we were, we were aware of it and definitely was something on our mind. But, uh, you know, and, and I think in that situation, um, I think the landowner would be understanding uh, and, and let us go in there and recover the elk, most likely with somebody with us from, you know, representing the landowner. So. Uh, yeah, good good questions, though, and definitely something to, to consider when you're hunting close to private land like that. Uh, my elk, frontal elk, shot it. Why did we pack it out with pack frames instead of our <laughs> XO pack? Because we we're going to be hunting again the next day, and we didn't want to get our packs bloody and have to wash them that night. So we ran back rode the bike back. I always have the pack frames in the truck. That's yeah. just, if you can keep blood off of the pack, it just saves it. And we packed out yeah. 10 elk, 11 elk, I think this year in Destination Elk. And so the bike trailer got used, the pack frames got used, the, the less times that we had to put quarters in the XO just keeps them cleaner and prevents us, you know, once you wash them, get water in there, straps start swelling a little bit, and it just, so that's why we did it. We had access to be able to go back to the truck, get the pack frames, and uh, pack back, it out yeah. that way. And we're sitting here in Exo's office, and <laughs> they're, uh, they gave us a hard time about that one too. So. Yeah. Told them, hey, keep us in clean packs, and we'll, uh, we'll pack all of them in Exo packs. But, uh, let's see, are you guys hunting OTC tags or limited draw tags? I think going back through every hunt this year with the exception of the hunt winner and Casey in Utah every hunt was an over-the-counter tag uh, and then those two were on private land we explained the the reasoning that we had to do it on private land uh, but if we draw a tag we certainly put in for for tags if we draw it we're gonna hunt it uh, and if we had access to private land we would there's nothing wrong with hunting private land. That's you saw the elk were on the private land, and we just didn't have access. So. And Shane's elk tag is a tag that the state of Idaho Fish and Game has five tags allocated for disabled or these type of hunts that we go out and do. They have some set aside for veteran hunts, and then they also have some for these youth hunts that with life-threatening illnesses so they, they give five to uh, I think disabled veterans yeah. um, and then they give five to children 
with life-threatening illnesses. And they're all through a nonprofit organization. So thank you to the state of Idaho for yeah. coming through and keeping those tags available to be able to provide that experience to these type of kids and to the veterans as well. Yeah, yeah, great point. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I I had to throw this one in. It was there were some comments, but when Donnie brought up the topic of a basket on the front of a bike, I just you don't put baskets on the front of bikes. <laughs> and then when he said a manly basket, that really got me thinking. Yeah, I'm sure so. Corey's version of a basket is going to be way different than mine. That's Donnie's basket on the front of his bike. Yep, exactly. What, <laughs> what did I, what did you say you wanted the basket for? Snacks. Yeah, so a big old bag of gummy lifesavers in his pink basket. So, yeah, I just had to throw that one in there. Yeah. Coincidentally, I talked to Baku. They make a manly basket for the front of the bike. They call it a rack, not okay. a basket. So. <laughs> Saved yourself on that one. Yeah. But uh, let's see. Why does Corey sometimes call when he's the shooter? Won't the elk pinpoint his location? So uh, if you're a member of the University of Elk Hunting online course, you'll know that tactic as what we call the slingshot. And a lot of times an elk won't engage and won't respond unless he's engaged from close distance. And sometimes just 40 or 50 yards from the shooter to the caller, is too far and that bull won't engage with the caller. But if the shooter is 40 or 50 yards ahead and can give a couple cow calls to get the bull's interest or challenge him from, from that location, a lot of times that's enough to get the bull to break loose and start coming in and then I would go quiet, Donnie would take over on the calls and pull the bull into the setup. So yeah, they're great at pinpointing sound, but if they hear a sound and then they hear it 40 or 50 yards back, there's nothing making them think that cow or that bull might have been here and then walked back to his cows or the cow might have fed over the ridge. Uh, it's, it's a tactic that usually works really good. This year we struggled a bit to yep. get some of those bulls in close, but that's what we call the slingshot. And uh, there's a lot that goes into it and it doesn't work every time. And like people mentioned, if elk can pinpoint location, aren't you afraid they're gonna know right where you are? And we, uh, we take that into consideration for sure. Uh, what brand caliber rifle did you shoot your rifle bull with? So, Donnie yeah, hunted... A lot of those questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so I actually brought it in tonight. We, uh, we're hunting with the new Sig Cross made by Sig Sauer. Uh, a lot of cool things about it. It's got a, a one-piece receiver, uh, a lot of things. It's Sig's first bolt rifle, actually. Uh, but they're trying to, they call it a cross because they're putting a lot of the features that you'd use in a long range tactical type rifle and putting it into a hunting rifle platform. So bolt action, uh, some of the cool features, the stock on it, which you guys saw, and I always struggle with one hand to do it, but can you hold the rifle? No, no, you hold the rifle here, <laughs> there. So the stock on it folds up and mine actually has a long barrel and a heavy barrel. Donnie's, Donnie has a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's got the shorter barrel and the smaller barrel. So it's, I don't know, yep. a pound lighter, I think, yes. than mine. And short enough, you can actually put it inside a backpack. You can put the whole rifle on the inside. So if you were going back in somewhere and not hunting on the way, you could protect it a little better that way. I loved it for riding motorcycle this year, for hiking up the hill, hiking through brush, because with this folded, it literally comes up about to the top of the back and makes it easy to get around. And then when you need it, it literally just pops out, good to go. It's got an adjustable butt plate, adjustable cheek plate. Uh, it's got the magazine, just incredibly accurate rifle. The first time that I shot this rifle, uh, and sighted it in. It took two shots to get on paper. The next two shots were at 100 yards to get it dialed at 100, and the next two after that were at 500 yards off of a plastic table, not a dead rest or anything. It's a plastic table with a coat on the table, and I shot an inch and a quarter group at 500 yards. So 
incredibly accurate gun and uh, you saw that I was able to redeem myself on the hunt this year and yes. <laughs> actually hit the elk so we're good. Uh, I'm using the, the Vortex LHT, the Razor LHT, uh, phenomenal scope, great lightweight scope. Uh, can't say enough good things about it. Like we admit we're not long range rifle hunters. I, I love to shoot rifles and you know I think Donnie and I spend enough time shooting bows and rifles that we're proficient with them, but certainly not as knowledgeable as, as many rifle people. Mine's a 6.5. Mine is the 277 Fury. So it's the new cartridge that SIG developed. Uh, they've got it in a, the casing on it's got stainless steel at the bottom. So the base of the, the casing has stainless steel. So they're able to pressurize it more and get more velocity. I don't remember, I'm shooting 3,100 feet, I think, at the muzzle. Uh, yeah. Don't quote me on that, but it's really close somewhere right yeah. in there. Uh, it might be 3080, something. But um, the 277, you know, I'm a huge fan of the 7mm mag, which is a 284, a .284. So the 277 is slightly smaller in diameter, uh, but we're shooting 160 grain. 60 on yours, I was shooting 140. 140s. Yeah, so a little information about the, the rifles, but you can check them out at Sig Sauer at their website. Uh, just incredible, incredible rifle, and I couldn't be happier for the kind of hunting we do with the rifle. They, yeah. They're perfect. So they're light. Uh, don't quote me, I think yours is six pounds. I think it's seven two. Seven two, yeah. and mine is seven eight, I believe, maybe seven twelve. Seven pounds twelve ounces with the bigger barrel on it. So yeah. So that's the that's the skinny on the rifle. Lots of people in those four llama hunt yeah. episodes were asking about it. So why no blaze orange in Idaho? Hunting a rifle, no blaze orange. It's not a requirement by the state of Idaho. That wasn't the answer he gave earlier. <laughs> because in the state of Idaho, we're not allowed to shoot other people. <laughs> that wasn't the answer he gave either, but that's a good one. He, he said, because in Idaho, we know what an elk looks like. Yep. So that is uh, making light of a serious situation, which yep. is safety. But uh, in Idaho, it's not required. If I was going out and there were multiple vehicles at a trailhead, uh, especially with us calling during rifle season, wouldn't even, wouldn't take a chance. Yeah. Uh, when we hunt with the kids, when they're uh, hunting with rifle, same thing. I almost always have them wear an orange hat at least, unless we're going in deep somewhere or we get to a, a gate at the end of the road and hike in and there's no other vehicles yeah. there. But um, Idaho doesn't require it. And uh, it's something I think each individual has to make the decision on where they feel safe. Yeah. and. We definitely do wear orange uh, when we feel it's it's needed. More people around, most definitely. Yeah. So. Uh, let's see. Family friendly. There are several comments yes. thanking us for keeping it family friendly, and it always has been. It always will be. We've got kiddos. Uh, we want. The next generation to be able to get excited about hunting and follow along on our hunts. So I don't think there's ever been a swear word. We've tried. Donnie said yeah. fart a couple times <laughs> in a couple episodes. The, uh, yeah. the where do cow farts come from? Dad joke. Yeah. Um, that's that's about as bad as you're going to get from us. So we we are aware of that, and uh, you can rest assured that. Your children will never have to ask you about anything other than explaining dad jokes to them and clean dad jokes. So, uh, why didn't Mark and Jeff call more on their Idaho hunt? That was a, a lot of people saw a difference in hunting tactics and asked that question. Why aren't they calling more? They need to call more. They're just walking along and you know the hey Jeff, hey Jeff. Mark's always saying hey Jeff. There's the elk and. It's so hard, there's a couple reasons. Number one, they didn't have a camera guy. They were doing the calling and the camera work and that adds, I can't even tell you. I, you saw my camera work in Sam's hunt. 
I wasn't even calling. I was just trying to help Sam get on the bull and, and rifle hunt. And it's just, it's so tough to do. So that's part of it. The other one was they experienced what we did. When you got close to the elk and called, they moved away. And with all of the other hunting pressure in there, I think they quickly realized if we keep calling these elk, we're just going to get pushed out of here and move away. So they took advantage of vocal elk and moved in on the yeah. vocal elk and tried to capitalize. And they got close so many times. Yeah. They'd had a couple more days. And it, even that last day, I yeah. think yeah. things would have been different. So. Another, another extreme, it was an extreme because you're used to watching us. And we bugle <laughs> at everything Squirrel chatters, all we bugle the time. So going from our hunts to their hunts, there was going to be a big difference in how much calling is done. Plus, John likes to film Corey bugling every bugle that he bugles. He does, and he tells me, like the rifle hunt. Nothing's bugling, but he's handing me my bugle. He wasn't carrying my bugle. My bugle was on my backpack, and it was easier for him to grab and hand to me. So somebody said, you make John carry your bugle tube too? <laughs> no. John just has easy access to it, and he's always, every time we stop, he's like, hey, throw out a bugle. So yeah. he, he forces us to bugle a lot. We're usually pretty timid when it comes to calling and everything. John just, he makes us be aggressive. So. Uh, llama hunt. So... One of the questions that we got a lot was, did Donnie make one of the llamas pack his candy? <laughs> I did. And did that llama only pack candy? No. <laughs> Corey only showed what was on the outside of that. <laughs> Inside of that bag was all of my camp gear also and the snacks that I brought for Corey and John. <laughs> He, he is. That's that whole bag, that whole 19 pounds wasn't all candy. Yeah. There was a, I think there was a flashlight and a headlamp in there too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of llamas, uh, it was important that we have them very balanced. So one pannier on one side can't be uh, outside of one pound from the pannier on the other side. And if it is, it just causes a, an unbalance and Whereas llamas out faster makes them uncomfortable. So it is important that they are really well balanced. And one of the questions was, do you bring a scale or something with you in the woods, especially like the quarters up on the mountain? How do you get the elk meat within a pound? And yeah. yes, absolutely. We had a digital scale with us that's in the pannier. And we were fortunately, we boned everything out and we were able to literally take pieces of the meat and move it into a different bag to get those balanced. And if you're getting the llamas from Bo, the scale, he makes sure you, have the, you have the scale in the panniards when you get the llamas from him. Yeah, and that's, you know, I'll, I'll pause there and talk a little bit because there were a lot of comments about people who have used llamas and didn't like them, uh, people that heard about llamas always spitting and always laying down when they get a heavy load. These aren't normal normal llamas. These are pack llamas that have been bred for this and that have been trained for this. I mean, these llamas, I don't know how many years Bo trains them before he lets them go out yeah. with somebody who wants to rent them. And I, I can't tell you how awesome they were. Just the personalities, we never had a single problem. Every once in a while he'd come to a little stream or a mud puddle and they'd want to jump it and you had to be careful that you weren't standing right in front of them. But other than that, I mean, they didn't lay down. The one time we were coming down the hill with them loaded, we all stopped, and so one of the llamas laid down. When we got up to go, there wasn't any tugging on it. It just stood up and followed us down the hill. So that's just a, a testament to the effort and the knowledge that Bo Beatty and Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas has. Uh, if you're going to rent llamas and you're ever in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, maybe even northern Utah areas, I would strongly encourage you to check them out. And you just go to their website, wildernessridgetrailalmas.com, and Bo provides everything. I mean, we had the saddles, the panniers, the scales, the feed, the little cookies we gave them, a bucket for water. We literally had nothing llama related that we brought. It was all provided, and they were a lifesaver. One of the other reasons why those llamas are 
trained as well as they are is Bo uses them throughout the summer doing llama guided year. guided tours all over and they are working llamas and they're working year round with them so yeah yeah so Bo does he provides guided trips where he'll take and set up a camp for you you know backcountry fishing tours through Yellowstone all sorts of stuff and he uses the llamas to pack all of your gear you just hike in and yeah. fish and camp and have an incredible time yeah. that's a uh, we would love to have Bo come on one of our hunts because we've yes. tasted his camp cooking and it's yes, we have. <laughs> out of this world. So, uh, Let's see, a couple more here. Donnie forgot his hunting pack. We talked about that. Uh, Outfitters for Hope. And there are a lot of questions about love what you guys do with these kiddos. How can we be involved? Can we, you know, if you need somebody to help pack, if you need somebody to cook, uh, Outfitters for Hope just started this year, uh, last year before the hunting season here in Idaho. Uh, a good friend of ours, Kyle, who we'd all been involved with Hunt of a Lifetime in that organization. Uh, Kyle decided to start a local one here in Idaho and a smaller organization. So it's just at the ground level, just getting started. Shane was the first hunter uh, through that. And I know they've taken a couple more throughout the fall and the winter. Uh, so we don't have a whole bunch of volunteer opportunities yet. I'm sure as it grows, there, there will be. Uh, but there are opportunities to contribute and to help because it costs uh, probably five or six thousand dollars per hunt. Uh, by the time, you know, especially if they have to fly, we pay for the plane tickets. Uh, taxidermy is provided, meat processing is provided, uh, all the camp, the food. There's no expenses out of pocket. Gear is provided, spending money is provided, so they don't have to pay a penny uh, when they come on these trips. So if you were interested and, and felt so inclined, you can go to outfittersforhope.com, and that's outfitters, the number four, and then hope.com, and there's a, a link on there to donate. contribute and donate. So uh, any of these organizations that, that help children in those situations, we, uh, we support 100%. So, yeah. any questions you have? Oh, I don't have any questions. I think we need to bring John in. I was gonna say, my one hey John, can you, was, can you put your shirt on and come join us here for a minute? Put your shirt back on. Yeah, put your shirt back on. We do have a couple questions for John. He didn't know, we were springing this on him. He asked what the third chair was for. And, We'll scoot it back, Any? We want to make sure we see you right up there front and center. He's, he's turning it, you so didn't he's have it set up cut right. off. Yeah, he probably, he probably adjusted the camera there. I'm out of the camera shot. John is the wizard behind all of this. I mean, John's been with us in Elk 101 for seven years, eight years. Yeah. Um, you know, the Wyoming film we did several years ago, all of the Destination Elk videos in the online course, there's, what, 70 or 80 videos in there. John did all of those. Uh, he, you saw the pictures, you saw the quality of video. That's all him. Donnie and I, you saw me trying to video Samsung. That's my contribution to, to videoing. <laughs> so he's always behind the camera. You got to see him a little bit there when he walked back and took that little hike down the ridge and got the llamas and brought them back up for us. Yeah. Yeah. 2,200 vertical feet down and 2,200 vertical feet back up. And so. We want to make sure John got a little bit of love here in front of the camera. <laughs> I'd like to be on the other side of the camera. <laughs> yeah. So Corey's making me do this. I am. I absolutely am. So one of the things that uh, came up <laughs> was lemon Oreos. Oh, that's exactly. And I terrible. thought, you know, there were a lot of comments. You guys don't pay John enough, or you need to make sure John gets a good tip. <laughs> a good but tip. John. If I move these over here, he's probably going to start scooting away. He doesn't like lemon Oreos. He's going to have an allergic reaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get all itchy. But Donnie likes lemon Oreos. <laughs> yeah. And tomorrow is Donnie's birthday. Oh, so we got Donnie a birthday present. <laughs> Happy birthday, Donnie. Don't be jealous, John. <laughs> I'm going to let him have that one. So we were told that we needed to get John a good tip. There's your tip, John. What? Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? New prime bow. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. John's been hounding me. Can uh, you get a price? Can you find out what it'll cost <laughs> to get a prime bow? And I've been like, yeah, I'll check on it. They haven't gotten back to me yet. <laughs> oh my but god. We got John a prime bow. So <laughs> we need to see John in front of the camera more. Uh, That's when Donnie said we can go in that area hunting rifles with llamas again, I thought. Uh, Yep. Put me behind the camera <laughs> for three or four minutes. When you pull the trigger, everything else you can do. I'll go back. You just hit record and tell me to point it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Thanks for following us along. Yeah. yeah. It's not easy. Uh, thank you, guys. It's actually a lot of fun. It is fun. It is it's not easy. Fun. It's not easy, but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, with that, big thanks to John, obviously. Dale... Uh, yeah, Restless so, Soul, man. Restless Soul Photography, right? Restless yep. Soul Photography. On Instagram, Dale works with Randy Newberg and came and filmed with us two weeks, I think, during season, yeah. Yeah. during archery season. Um, we beat him up pretty good. <laughs> but he, he still talks to us, so I think yep. we're okay there. Uh, so big thanks to Dale and his efforts there. John does all the editing. So John does a lot of the filming, but he does all of the editing. So every episode you've seen is, is John's work. Uh, huge thanks to Shannon and Corey at Angry Spike. You got to see them hunt a little bit. Obviously our plans changed a bit there, but still we're able to uh, provide you with a little bit of Roosevelt action. And those guys are just, they're awesome. So excited to have them a part of what we do. Uh, the Skousens, Mark and Jeff, this is their second year being involved as well, and great, great guys. Different, little different hunting style. They, they actually hunt a lot like us, maybe not as aggressive on the calling, but yeah. they usually call quite a bit, and they're, uh, they're usually very, very successful. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, we need to announce some winners. We do. So, uh recognize that when we get through the winners we're going to come back and share plans for next season and you don't want to miss what we're about to share yeah. this is we're excited it's going to be an incredible destination elk v4 and we had a lot of comments want to see you hunt with lewis more want to see you hunt with randy <laughs> sure wish bo Beatty could be a part of it you know there's all these people that everybody wants to hunt with they want us to produce uh, next year, they want 365 episodes, they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's just hard to do. So uh, we've got some awesome stuff coming next year that you're going to love. So with that, just a reminder, if you are a winner, there's a, a pile of you on here. So if you're a winner, uh, send an email to info at elk101.com and let us know your name because some of these are just handles off of youtube so some of them are names some of them aren't uh, let us know your your name and your shipping address we will respond to your email and let you know what you've won and we will get it shipped out to you as quickly as we can yes bear in mind we're giving you two weeks so tonight is march 8th yeah. march 8th tonight so we'll give you two weeks from tonight so monday the 22nd. Email us by then. If it's after that, the prize is going to somebody else. So two weeks, send that email to us. And don't forget, we've got the giveaway at elk101.com forward slash DEV3. You can still enter that through Friday of this week. And we'll be announcing or getting a hold of the winners from the Baku giveaway. Uh, it's closed now as well, but we'll get a hold of those who won there. And with that, we have 120 names. I'm going to read through them as quickly as I can. I'm going to pronounce them as closely to the English pronunciation that I come up with as I can. And we'll also put them down right down here. If you click on the description or the show notes, uh, all of these names will be listed in there. So we, I put them alphabetically by the first name or the first letter. So I'm just going to run through them here. We've got 2507 Jesse. We've got Adam Roller. We've got A.G. Quaglino. Alania L. Alaska 316. Alex Winter. AMJ 2115. Sounds like a robot. <laughs> C3PO. Uh, Andrew Kelman. 
Andrew Kellum, K-E-L-I-M, Austin Locker, the letter B is in boy, and then Villegas, Ben Prado, Ben Tatro, T-A-T-R-O, Benjamin Schultz, Brad Snedeker, Brady Duffin, Brandon Darometti, Brian D. McBride, C. Fuji 90, Chad Johnson, Chapman Cox, Cody Crane, Cody Mitchell, Cody Purcell, Cody Wilson. <laughs> a lot of Cody's. <laughs> Shut up, can I kid? Hey, there's two Corys also, <laughs> and <laughs> both of them spelled their names correctly. <laughs> so Corey Knudsen and Corey Watson. C O R E Y. Good job, guys. Good job to your parents. Spelled it the right way. Curtis Perry, Dallas Cook, Daniel Kent, Dave Ennis, David Croff, K R O P F, Dustin R. Dustin Snyder, Dustin Toe, Dylan Smith, self-filmed hunting, the letters E, J, M, Elevated Adventures, Garrett Day, Greg Bell, Harold Bleemel, and remember, you might be named Brady Duffin, but if your YouTube handle isn't Brady Duffin, then you're not the winner. So these are the YouTube handles, the YouTube usernames. Hunter Thomas, Ivan Schwartz, Jared Cash, Jaron Badger, Jason Meadows, Jay Evans, Jed Addis, Jeff Venz, V-E-N-S, Jeremiah Siders, Jeremy Olmsted, J. George 442, Jim Gappa, Joe McCarthy, Joe Rickney, John Jones, Jonathan McGlynn, Jordan B, as in boy B, Josh Eckerd, Josh Wheeler, Justin Ham, and that's Justin with an A, J U S T A N, Cade Coulter, Caden Robertson, Kelly Parton, Kevin Michael, Kyle Gray, Lisa Harrison, Lauren Hermanson, Lynn Shrum, Mark Cray, K R A H E, Matt Warner, Matt Wilson, the letters M G M, like a casino or something in Vegas. Wow, the MGM's following us. <laughs> Just kidding. M G M though. That that are those are the letters. Michael Weidenfeld, Mike A. Mike Bush, Mike Carter, Nathan Ketchum, Nick Haas, Oki Bob 25, Oscar George, Patrick Peltier, Paul Raymond, Philip Wise, Randy Sloan, R.C. Hunter, Four Rax, R-A-X, Rob Rothwell, Robert Humphreys, Ronald Hudson, Ryan Duffy, Ryan Closerman, Ryan Nichols, Satch Schultz, Seth Corson, Sean Sloan, Sean T. Kunkel, Simple Straws, S-T-R-A-Z, Slade Larson, Smith Family, Snake River Stickbow, Steve A., Steve Crater, Stephen Kurtzeal, Sonny Linares, Tanner Jacobson, spelled the last name correctly <laughs> with an S-E-N, Tanner Jacobson, Tavin Likens, Terry Jones, Tess and Andrew Jones, Thad Roberts, The Budget Sportsman, Theodore Rasmussen, Tim Lozano, Tom Kruk, K-R-U-K, Tom Wiegand, Travis Holding, Tyler Moore, Walter Backer, Weston Bontrager, Weston Stout, Zachary Cedar, and if your last name or your first name starts with the letter Z, 
It might be you. We've got one more here. <laughs> Everybody with the first name starts with a Z, stand up. <laughs> yeah. All three of you. Second letter's an A. Zach Hefty. So again, that's a long list, a boring segment to sit through and listen to. But if you heard your YouTube username listed there, send us an email, info at elk101.com. It's also down in the notes. If you thought you heard your name and you need to verify, just look down in the, the video description here and it will be there. So congrats to all the winners. Again, send us the email. We'll let you know what you won. Somebody's going to win a Baku bike. Uh, there's Prime Bows. There's XO Backpacks. There's tons of Bugleberry and Bugle Tubes and Elk Calls and yeah. Peaks Trekking Poles and Gators and Yeti Coolers and Yeti Chairs and Yeti Bottles and Mugs and Go Boxes. Go boxes. So tons of stuff there. And we need to give away an Elk Hunt. Yes, we do. Mountain Ops gave away an Elk Hunt. And all you had to do was order product on their website at mountainops.com. Uh, for every order placed, you got an entry. And then if you ordered the bars or the bugleberry with the first couple hours of the promotion before it sold out, you got extra entries. <laughs> and the winner of the elk hunt, it'll take place in Utah on an incredible CWMU. You are in for the time of your life. You live in Pennsylvania, oh. so you're going to get to come out west and hunt elk. And your name is Joshua Vogel. So Joshua, congratulations. Congratulations, uh, yeah. definitely. It's going to be fun. So Mountain Ops will be contacting you and, and filling you in on all the details of that. But congrats to everybody who's won gear. And I know we get a lot of, a lot of comments that you don't have to give stuff away to get us to watch your videos. And honestly, that's not why we do it. Yeah. We do it to give back to you guys. And we are blessed with incredible partners who recognize value in getting their product out to you. And they allow us to be the ones that, that get to do that. So uh, as long as we're able to, we're going to keep giving stuff away because we want to give back and we want you to have an opportunity to win. That's why we spread it out so much this year. There's 121 winners right there, more coming. Last year, I think we had 30 or 40. The first year we had 12 or something. So just trying to, to spread it around. But can we talk about next year? We can. There's a lot of names on that list. And I recognize a lot of those names and they're, I recognize a lot of them from multiple episodes too. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of you that commented on every episode yeah. and hopefully that paid off for some of you. But next year, do you have a dad joke? I, he just looked at his phone. I'm still... He glanced down. His phone's right there. <laughs> my phone is off. Oh, okay. He always <laughs> says I'm looking at my phone. I was just... I'm still stuck on how you read those out all alphabetically. And there's only, I've always thought that there's only 25 letters in the alphabet. I don't know why. But um, definitely hit the downhill side. <laughs> we used up all the good ones. Well, and we had all the chairs set up in the middle of the room but it was pretty cold over there. So we came over here to the corner where it's 90 degrees. A little better. That was better. A little better. That was better. A little better. See, better. you need John next to Donnie when he tells the jokes, because I always give Donnie a hard time. I'm like, no, Corey not never it. laughs. John's back behind the camera just shaking, <laughs> laughing so hard. It's, so. it's in the delivery. Yeah. It is in the delivery. Several of you have made comments, you guys need to have a dad joke tell off or laugh yeah. off or something, just do a search here on the YouTube yeah, channel. We'll we did one last year. So yeah. Donnie and I had a little contest. Who could make John laugh the most times? You'll have to go and see who won. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of being alone. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about Destination Elk 4. <laughs> yeah. 
Have you ever seen the TV series Alone? I know you have. Yep. I know you've been watched all set, binge watched. I've watched all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watched. You haven't? Few. No. Well, your pay is suspended until they do. <laughs> it's a requirement That's for the job from here forward. Give the bow back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought. I just did. So Alone is on is it History Channel or yeah. Discovery History Channel. Yeah. So History Channel. phenomenal. I love the I love the premise of it. They take ten people, put them at remote locations separate from each other and they can only take 10 items with them and the last one standing wins and so they have a sat phone they can tap out and they have to live off the land they have to build their own shelter everything but the way that the series is put together the the editing and all of that is super cool so for destination elk v4 we're going to put donnie and john on islands and make them survive <laughs> Totally kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tap it. I'm out. I'm out. We are going to follow a very similar format for Destination Elk V4. And the comments of several of the people who you want to see involved are going to be involved. So there will be six teams. They will hunt for eight days. There will be two hunters and one cameraman in each team. And there's no contest. It isn't a competition at all. It's just strictly a format that we can use to bounce from one camp to another camp to another camp and share the action, the lack of action, the drama, the lack of drama, the success, the failure from each of those different camps in each episode. So over the course of eight days, we'll break it up into 16 episodes. There will be an intro episode where we'll all get together and introduce you to who's participating. There will be a final episode where we all get together and talk about the season. In the middle of the series, we will do a gear dump where everybody will share the gear that they're using. And you're going to see there's a lot of variety in gear when you get six groups together. So each group will uh, have two hunters. So there'll be two tags in each group. Six groups makes 12 tags. So we'll keep track during each episode of how many tags remain. We, uh, you saw this year, we shared a lot of time, you know, the time of the day, 8.15, we tried to really take you along throughout the day so we didn't make a six hour jump and you're like, are we still in the morning hunt here? Uh, that'll all be displayed. We'll talk about elevation and temperature, a lot of stuff that will be, you know, details will be incorporated into that. So each day you'll see each of the groups and what they're doing on that day so day one you'll see each of the groups and how they're starting and then the next day will be each group again so yeah you'll get to follow along and so we'll spend three or four minutes showing the action from one group then we'll bounce to another group uh, we've already got plans to hunt oregon idaho montana wyoming uh, not everything's locked down yet uh, but if you are hoping to see uh, people like Randy Newberg, yeah. Bo Beatty, the guys from Angry Spike. Uh, should we? That, that's good enough for now. <laughs> Let us know who you want to see. Leave a comment down below. Tell us who you'd want to see. We do have a couple of the spots aren't yet filled. And uh, we'd love to get some input from you who you'd like to see hunt. Uh, we're going to be, Donnie and I will be hunting together. Uh, We'll, we'll save some of the other teams for you. You know a few of the people involved, but there will be some pretty awesome teams as far as who's hunting with who. Uh, just a way for us to share more strategies. You know, Donnie and I hunt a certain way, but Randy hunts a completely different way. And hunting Roosevelt elk might be completely different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we're going to give you different climates, different terrains, different elevations, different groups, different strategies, different tactics. And... Uh, be pretty awesome looking, so looking forward to it john's really excited yeah. because once you watch if you go and watch alone you'll notice all of the b-roll shots the incredible videography uh john's putting all of that together <laughs> incredible videography it's a incredible. lot of selfie cams a lot of selfie cams <laughs> it's a ton of stuff yeah. but no the personality the personable side of it is going to be yeah. outstanding with that many different personalities it's going to be really really cool because filming Corey Bugle 17,000 times a season. 
Did you can, count? Can wear on a guy. <laughs> no, I wasn't counting. <laughs> yeah, John's ears ring. He's got a headset on with a microphone, and we like to give him a hard time. A lot of times <laughs> we'll uh, clap real loudly in it just to make sure it's working, or we'll just lip you know, give him the lip motion and not actually make any sound, make him think his headphones aren't plugged in. So. Yeah. You need to talk to HR. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the email address, so I'll give yeah, it to you. Yeah. So. Anything else that you can think of, Destination Elk V4? No, it's been, I've been loving reading all the comments. And that's, we get a, it's been, we extended it out a little bit this year from, the end of season until when we released and you kind of forget some of the stuff that went on. I mean, it was packed and I forgot things that we did during the days and being able to go back and watch them with, I was watching them at the same time they were released with you guys. <laughs> and then seeing all the comments roll in and just, it's rewarding to be able to have people enjoy, enjoy seeing us do the stuff that we enjoy. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, thank you sincerely for for being here. Yeah, thanks to John for. I mean, John really works some magic. If it was Donnie and I, you'd get it'd be Blair Witch Project <laughs> V4 instead of Destination Elk V4. But. Uh, the comments, over 100,000 comments uh, that were left for us in the last 28 days. Thank you for that. Uh, I had some stats, kind of 20, 20 point, uh, 20, 21 million minutes of video watched, I think. Uh, 1.5 million views. So. We're at uh, about 93,000 subscribers. It's grown a bit here during the series, and we just we can't thank you enough for, for the support. Uh, be sure and thank our sponsors. If you're looking for elk calls or a cool t-shirt, I'm the only one wearing a t-shirt tonight. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be okay. I dressed up, everybody else. <laughs> I have a sponsor. So. Oh, there you go. Uh, you can go to the Elk 101 store, uh, elk calls, anything elk hunting related you need. You can go there. If you're a member of the University of Elk Hunting online course, you're going to save 15% as a member in the Elk 101 store. And if you're not a member, you can sign up. Again, a little bit of time left to use the code DESTINATION. It's going to save you $20. So you can sign up for the entire course for $79. That gets you all of the information, everything that we use, uh, stuff that you see in Destination Elk, and a whole lot more explained. And we've got some big, exciting announcements. My partnership with Randy Newberg and Go Hunt are allowing us to add a whole bunch more content. So more stuff's coming very shortly and just a lot of cool stuff, so. And if you aren't a member of the online course yet, you have six months until it until is September. Until elk season. Until. So yeah. you have six months and that's plenty of time to go through the course and start practicing some of the things that you've learned in the course. Yep. So, comment down below one last time here. Let us know what your favorite episode was, what your favorite hunt was, who you want to see us hunt with in Destination Elk V4, who you want to see included in that. Uh, Thanks. Anything, anything, anything else that you want them to comment? You're always the one that comes up with the comment <laughs> if you've ever seen a cougar. Comment. <laughs> always yeah. have some good topics there to comment about. No. Comment if you want to see us again. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> awesome. Well, we've kept you here long enough. This is a, a recap. We know there's not a whole lot of elk action, uh, but we just want to say thank you. Wanted to share some of, uh, some of our thoughts on the season and share with you some of the looking ahead sneak peek for next year. So. We'll catch you. We'll have more videos coming here to uh, the Elk 101 YouTube channel. Make sure and subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit like. We had, uh, I think there were like 13 people that thumbs downed us. So uh, we've got to outnumber them. Share it with your friends, and we will see you back here next year, Destination Elk V4. The success rate for do-it-yourself public land elk hunters hovers around 10%. The reality of that statement is that 9 out of 10 elk hunters each fall fail to fill their tag. 
or the average elk hunter only fills their elk tag once every 10 years. But average no longer applies to you. Crush the averages and sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course today and become a consistently successful elk hunter.